Welcome back to Comedy Pinata, live from New York City. Uh, Mike's behind the camera today. We got special guest Godfrey. Yo. And from The Daily Show, Roy Wood Jr. Roy. Hello. You can say from Sullivan and Son, the hit TBS sitcom that deserved a fourth season. It was promised Yo, a fourth season on the handshake. That was a funny show, man. Yeah. And then the motherfucker quit. That show was. <laughs> and then they hired a new motherfucker, and he said, really? if your name yeah. ain't Conan O'Brien, get the fuck off my network. What? Yeah. But, well, basically, yeah. yeah. So the, the new president came in. Oh, wow. The old president said, we'll see you guys next season. We're like, great. And then the new president came in. He's like, get the fuck out. So, the, new, yeah. the old president was like, season four on the way. See you next year. Wow. Next next week, news article. Yeah, motherfucker, I'm going to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I just that's got hired just, by the Hawks. I'm out of this business. I think, that's what, I think it's like the presidency, you know, when someone becomes president, they go, I'm shutting on all that shit you signed. Fuck your shit. They yeah. just want to clean up and leave their print on it. You know what it's like in that TV, was a though? Funny, that was a funny sitcom. It was really funny. TV's Thank fucked you. up, though, because anytime a new nigga come in, they just kill all of the old shows yeah, that yeah. the previous... like when the alligator... <laughs> what is it like if a if an alligator mates... No, the lion... When a new lion takes over a pride, yeah. he kills all the cubs, which oh, sends yeah. all the women back into heat so they can be his kids. That's gangster. If I if I challenge it's you TBS then. <laughs> yeah, that's TBS. <laughs> a new lion took over the pride and he killed all the other lion's kids. <laughs> Fuck that's your lineage. TBS, TBS doesn't want to take over the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's why well, you do a point. Yeah. We brought up a good point. Um we're fascinated at your schedule. I have a question for you guys. Yeah. What, what, what just happened? <laughs> what the, this isn't an intervention. Hang on. Yeah. It's not an intervention. <laughs> and this is a question filled with respect because oh, really? I wish I could do it. What? <sighs> I've never not seen you in New York City before midnight. Oh. You, when you do sets in the city, first off, you're a beast on the road, whatever your website, like right now, last I saw, I think you're doing like, if there's... 40 weeks left in this year, Godfrey's doing 38. Yeah. Give or take. Like, he's a fucking always working, grind. Yeah. But then in the city, he always does the late sets yes. at the cellar. Yeah. I don't know if you're doing other sets otherwise, but what is it about performing at 1.30 in the fucking morning <laughs> on a Tuesday night that you can't, like, nigga, it's you It's called never... not being on a show. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you go to bed early, brother. Because <laughs> you're on a show. That's I'd like to go to bed early, too. Because <laughs> when, when you guys were on a sitcom, you was going to bed early. I, was, I wasn't even coming in. Yeah. But, but I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. I, my, listen, I've always, I've been on different shows, like different things here. But I would love to be on something. You know, you try to be on things. You audition Regularly, for stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but I go, all right, I'm not doing that, so I'm going to do this other thing, you know? I mean, but why not 10 p.m.? Well, but 10 p.m. Let me tell you why. Because I'm during the day, I do other shit. I go to the gym, I do a bunch of other shit, and I don't want to have to rush to get downtown. So when I do go to gym, do 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 all because I was doing martial, you know, I was, perfect. I was doing martial arts a long time. I was I do a bunch of shit in the daytime, and then. At night, I want to chill. When I come back from jail, I chill out, take a shower, go home, and I go, now I have a spot so I can take, I, I do all, I do a lot of shit before, I just try to get shit done before I go downtown, and I want to be rushing to do a set. And another thing is, I like going late because you do more time. I do way more time. No one's like sweating me. There's no yeah. comics going, how much more time do you have? You know, you do the late show. There's I do the late show. There's yeah. no pressure. That's why me and Atel, Atel started doing it late. Yeah. Because you can fuck around more. That's why Those I do that. crowds are a little tougher in a way because you they might catch a everything. sluggish one. Yes. It's they like see training in sand. And I'm like, that motherfucker come in here every fucking week and I, do the fucking yeah. 110 slot. Yeah, I do the fucking respect. 110, and that's what I do. And I know through how comedy works, the later you do it, the hard the jokes are just better. If my joke works at this time, wait till I get on a road at eight p.m. and they only seen two comics, and then it's me. That's why yeah. you yeah. I, you rip them in, apart because you have all this Shit. time to work it out, and that, that's why. Because you'll 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 come up there with a premise and you will run it into the ground. But I saw you doing the thing about the spelling bee 
why Indians are so good at the spelling bee. You're like, you know why they can spell anything? Listen to their names. That's it. And their you're... last names. <laughs> Listen Jesus to last Christ. Names. Raji, Madabadabamananda. Like... <laughs> they already have practice. Like, of course you're they not can spell. beating a motherfucker that spells his, his whole name is a sentence. <laughs> They need to put his name in a sentence. They'd be like, spell your last name. Oh, can you put it in a sentence? That's how trained they are. They won't even know it's their own name. Uh, Panamananda, could you put that in a sentence? What is the origin? From your damn family. Oh, okay. Oh, P A N N A D N N A. Get it? N N N A D D. And it's facts. Because I watched the spelling bee. I used to watch the spelling bee. It was the spelling bee. Then when the Indians were. The Indian kids were dominating. It got more money. That shit got more attention. And then it became the national beat. They started getting money. Now it started becoming the cool. Now yeah. everybody was paying attention. These Indian kids was killing everybody. And then a black girl won last year. Out of boredom, she won. She was very, she's uh, that smart. She was like, I was bored, so I beat, beat all the Indian kids. <laughs> so I have this joke about the Indian kids, like, how did you just come and beat? <laughs> we study every day the dictionary. We study everything. Almanac, we study everything. Google. And this black girl just come in and beat it the first time. Coming. <laughs> My accent is on point. That's why the Indians go, how did you get the accent? How are you, you, you know, I hate when they go, you know people from Bitch. India? What do you mean, do we know people from India? You run into us. <laughs> I go to Dunkin' Donuts, I'm arguing with you. Do I said, you, I want the frost, the chocolate frosted. You don't do want you, sprinkle? No. Do you, do you, <laughs> hang on, I got a question. What? <laughs> all the, all the accents that yes, you do, Roy. and, and impersonations, I don't even just say yeah, accents, Roy. but like, when do you practice this shit? Because <laughs> by the time... Indian accent, 15 minutes. One, like, just one never... to two, Indian accent. <laughs> two to four, Chinese. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey, five to four. Steve Harvey, five to six. Steve Harvey, uh, Obama. <laughs> you do a little Steve Harvey. Because I never hear... I've never heard him do an impersonation or an accent that sounded rusty. Like, by the time it's on... You'll hear a new joke. Oh, yeah. And the accent's perfect. I'm like, when oh, yeah. are you practicing... Cause I, are you walking down the street, nigga? No, like, when do you... <laughs> if I start talking to myself down the street, I'm I'm gonna have a cup in my hand. Why? I want money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this dude crazy. Who want me to do Steve Harvey? I'm gonna be on the train like, ladies and gentlemen, I've got all kind of impersonations. <laughs> All right, can we get to this? Oh, we got to get to our, our what, are we get, what are we getting to? So we oh, watch, we're watching we watch comedy. Oh, right. oh, oh, okay, this, my bad. Do we have an agenda? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 right. oh we got to watch other people's we watch, sets? We watch stand-up, and, um, and then at the end, one of our clips will be shown. So I never know who the clips are. Oh. We watch stand-up together. We discuss... If there's a story that comes up, whatever you want to talk oh, about. Oh, damn. I, I thought okay. we were just, this was going good. Yeah, we just shoot the shit. <laughs> Sam Morell. Any thoughts on oh, Sam? Oh, Sam Morell's a beast. great. Self-made. Yeah, a beast. Such Earned a... it in the mud. Now he's doing theaters. He grinded during theater, the pandemic. Yeah. That motherfucker was on rooftops yes, when COVID yeah, was yeah. COVID. Yes, yeah. was. Remember back in the day, you wash your groceries on the front porch, and Sam Morell was like out there, no mask. Fuck it. <laughs> it was Sam and Mark Norman. Them two yes. niggas. Yeah. Mark Norman was on the side. He shot a sidewalk special. Damn, Mark. Like a 10 minute fucking just That's with Mark. a karaoke yeah, machine. And Mark. just Mark. any pedestrian that walked by, he'd just start performing for him real fast while he walked by. Pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> but nah, I fuck with Sam. Sam man. Yeah, I, I love go. Sam. Here's Sam Morell. Marjorie Taylor Greene said she went to the Holocaust Museum. I was reading this article and no one heard. I thought the next sentence was going to be like, I don't buy it, but. She went the other way. She said it was actually way worse than she thought. Also a weird thing for an adult to be like, you guys might not know this, but the Holocaust was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but then she said, it wasn't just Jews in those camps. And I was like, yeah, but it was our, it was our thing. <laughs> if you're a non-Jew in a concentration camp, I bet you were looking around like, is there someone I can talk to? <laughs> <laughs> I think a mistake has been made. Oh, shit. <laughs> Everyone around you is complaining. You're like, you think you have it bad. I'm not even supposed to be here. So. <laughs> she said Jehovah's Witnesses were in the concentration camps. Isn't it crazy that there was a time where people would knock on their door and they were like, shit. <laughs> Damn, he's good. There's Samuel. He's good. He's just a great writer. Yeah. Just great jokes. 
And he's just, I've seen him grind it up, like you said, just working that shit constantly, just a constant, just a consistent work, uh, work ethic is fantastic. I've done their podcast, We May Be Drunk, so. Yeah. yeah. Sam, Sam does a good job, too, because I think what the COVID era created also was lack of TV exposure. Yeah. yeah. So he would chop up clips and throw them out Smart. faster, mm-hmm. so his shit became more topical. Like mm-hmm. Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of that, that's, that's not even... That's recent. That's like a year ago. And he just, yeah, let's put it on TV it's now. It's fantastic. Yeah. Like, normally you hoard the joke for, well, one day when I get a special in yeah. four years. And exactly. Sam was like, nah, let's put it out. I'll write something else. Right. Because they're not doing that for us anymore, I think. Yeah. There's the gatekeepers, which some of us actually know. They're not really just ha- giving it to the people who are ready for specials. Right. You know, that people, like all three of us, I mean, we're ready for a special. We're gonna we'll get the shit together, yeah. bong 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 easily. I mean, but they're not really doing that. So I have to give props to Andrew Schultz though. He was really a re- rebel. Yeah, really starting posting his own thing. He said we got to start yeah. counting on us. That's when Andrew grew his like his uh, um, local union hire uh, boss mustache. <laughs> you, you, you know, he goes like, you know, he's this hawk. You a union like guy? Yeah, he goes like this, listen. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, fuck the powers that be. Count on yourself. I'm tired of this crap. That's when he yeah. got his, but he really changed the game. I mean, like Rogue and all, it's just nice that people were like, you know, fuck them. Sure. Just do it ourselves. Let's count on the people. And you got Norman yeah. doing theaters. Uh, Sam, a lot of people are really doing well just really counting themselves using social media matt rife have you seen what happened to this guy yeah matt, matt rife post surgery yeah. yes yeah no post- matt. <laughs> oh stop oh, come on that's that hilarious <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh did he got surgery yeah oh he I, was a good looking kid before then too but he, he said because he like, he's, now he's like captain america he's that like, dude just yeah. woke up i yeah, thought he went to hogwarts did. and got his face changed yeah. <laughs> he's like dumbledore yes matt drive well, well, you're going to be handsome 50 points <laughs> Gryffindor. Well, whatever it was the motherfucker sell out theaters now maybe i need to do that maybe yeah. i need to go get the matt right jaw. <laughs> that jaw <laughs> yeah. have you seen roy wood that's you know you know what's my biggest Welcome fear. To the Daily Show. <laughs> you know my biggest fear, bro. Is, like, and reason? Burn knew me when I was two seventy. I'm two thirty now. Oh, dope. Uh, like, I want to lose a little more weight, but I'm scared I'm gonna lose it in my face because I know, like, I like. You're gonna be like, yo, this Roy, is part, yo. This is my money right here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to lose weight from here, but I need to keep. Because <laughs> you know, that if you're a gullet. I think 20 years of chubby face. <laughs> you go, if, if the streets know you as chubby face, and then you get this shit out of oh, shit. Roy would be like, <laughs> Roy is in, boy, Roy is ripped. <laughs> but he got the. Let me keep that. Let me keep that. Let me keep got that. The job. <laughs> but nah, man, them boys are self made, man. Yeah, they well, no one right, time to oh, me. I didn't know he had plastic surgery and shit. I didn't know. He had some more. Yeah. yeah, but he talks about it. But, but Matt, it looks great, though. It looks great. Um, but Matt wrote jokes. Matt grinded. About the, 13 like, doing them yeah, shit yeah. sets and shit rooms because the mainstream I, rooms told him no. Nope. Yeah. I was around him and he was always a nice guy. The nicest, yeah, nice, nice kid guy. and just it was the social media. It was the TikToks. Yeah. He had somebody like post his stuff and it's really just him talking to women and blah, blah, blah. And shit. Have you seen the numbers on some of his? Oh, uh, it's unbelievable. But 10 million. 20 million. Yeah. Matt what? does a great job of tying the crowd work back to a stand up. Sure, yeah, yeah, she sure And does. I think that, and it creates a conversation within mm-hmm. social media because yeah. Yeah. it's something to, it's the, the dialogue continues within the comments, yeah. which creates an engagement He's and all that shit. He's working that shit. I, was, I texted him and said, man, good for you, man. Because yeah. I know he got played by a lot of people, like comics that I know, yep. when they were the shit shit and he got shit on. Yep. And I said, and I even texted, fuck, blah, 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 blah. Good for you. Good for that kid. And I'm like, I don't know how he's going to. It's. I mean, he sold out all year already. Sold oh, yeah, out yeah, and yeah. overseas, I heard. Yeah. Uh-huh. He just so. So I don't know how it's going to handle that because that is like, that's what this social media can do. It literally is a steroid if things work out for you. If Shit, you, if you like are that. a good comic who can write, it is sustainable yeah, and yep. you can keep Yeah, Because there's right. a lot of cats that get it and then they don't keep it. No. Right. Yeah. And I think that's part of the issue too is that. Mm-hmm social media can boost up something that seems right and then you go to see it live Ooh. and you be like, Ooh, like oh yeah yeah, yeah. Hey. yeah. oh pobre comedy, comedy is un- <laughs> the thing hey. i love about comedy it's 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 the same thing as boxing i take comedy and boxing the same exact way because a lot of times people think they got it they know how to do comedy because 
they have a sense of humor. Everyone has one. So they go, I can do it. People think they can box because they have arms. <laughs> That, that's that, that's what I did when I went when I went to Pacquiao when I went to Pacquiao's gym and because yeah. I used to go with Adam Hunter right and that's a we, big MMA motherfucker right yeah there. and, we, Adam, and Adam, yeah, Adam yeah Adam is, Adam is uh, he was a you know uh, state wrestling champion in New England like he's a commentator like he's a comic and like works for yeah and he can re <laughs> yeah. he's a wrestler a yeah. championship wrestler he's a really he can fight his ass off yeah he used to be in New York and he um. Yeah, we would go to Pacquiao's gym watching him train, and then I went into, you know, I would go there, and then they started, I knew Freddie Roach and all that, so I would watch Pacquiao and his brothers, and and you would see McConaughey, you see all kinds of people in the gym, and I was like, oh, let me go in and to the ring, and you know, James Tony, there's a mm -hmm. lot of boxers, so they, would, out. they knew who I was, they was like, oh, there go that comedian shit, look at the new comedian, you, you, man, you, know, you don't know how to box, motherfucker, you know, fucking with me, I said, Watch this. Watch. Uh, yeah, I went yeah, into yeah. the ring. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. and 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 you know, uh uh what's it? Freddie Roach's brother, Pepper Roach. He goes, Hey, you wanna do some myth? They all talk like this old body. Hey, you wanna do myths in the chill? I was like, Yeah, shit. So I go, <laughs> so I put the shit on. Yeah. Yeah. They tie my shit up. <laughs> I'm, do I'm doing what I've seen on TV, you know, doing this shit and and so he goes, okay, this is what I want you to do. You're going to go boom, boom, jab, then right, okay? Bang, bang, right. We're going to do that. We're going to start off, right, two jabs, then you. <laughs> so I'm doing <laughs> I start doing it. Boom, boom. Okay, you hit like a pussy. Let's do this over. I'm like, what? Those dudes are going, come on, motherfucker. You can't hit. I was like. Getting heckled. Yo. Brought so it on he's, yourself. He goes, you got to use, you got to drop your leg. When you punch, you got to use your legs. I'm saying, like, use my legs? How yeah. Fuck? My arms are right here. I'm going to use He goes, you got to drop the fucking. They're like, drop your goddamn leg. I'm like, oh. Can't <laughs> yeah. do it. Then I start doing this. You know that? Because you hear boxers do that? Exhale when you I punch. start going. He goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I, I go, that's right. Isn't that how He goes, you're not a fucking boxer. This is your first time. Don't do that. That's, that's a certain training we do. Oh, and then I start doing Ali shit. I start hitting and I start doing it. He Little goes, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? He kept going. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, you're not Ali. <laughs> Ali was a freak of nature. He was 6'3". He fought like a lightweight. He's like, you're a, all we need is this. You move here. You keep your leg. And then he were like, close his legs. <laughs> My legs were too wide. Cause you I took more on footwork yet. Like, <laughs> yo, I was I But I came in there thinking I sure. knew. But I go, it's a real science. If you got a twist, he goes, turn your fist over. Oh shit, because that's a lot of times when they punch, they open up the, you know, you open up the, the skin yeah. when you do that. And I didn't know all that, but it's a real science. Because I came from martial arts, hapkido. You know, how I was doing martial arts. Yeah, I was doing hapkido for ten years, so my stance was wide because of wide stances and shit. And they were like, yeah, you was doing that karate shit. Yo, get the fucking legs back in. They tied a little <laughs> rope to me and really. And, Oh, yeah. It was like, yeah. And it was like, yeah. I have so much respect. And they were like, it's very small movements. Everything is here, here, here. It's, I was like, wow. Because I'm thinking watching TV. And that's how people, a lot of people approach comedy. Especially a lot of these Instagram you know what, people. You they know approach what? comedy like that. Comedy is one of the few art forms that everybody accidentally does. Mm -hmm. So they think they can always do it. Right. Which is and so that's that's the issue. Then the issue we have as comedians is that the consumers of comedy they don't really give a fuck who makes them laugh every day. They just want to laugh. Yeah. So they are content getting a laugh from whoever the fuck. Which is why it could just be some motherfucker in a house doing something goofy with a girlfriend, and that will get as many hits as sure. a brilliant Sam Morrill clip. And all the specials that are out now, it's just like. Every week I see somebody posting it. I'm taping my special. I'm like, who? Who are you? Like, when When did... And they're letting it happen, though. Oh, my Especially God. Especially if you check a box. I'm yeah. Indian and Tibetan. Comedy. <laughs> so my yeah. mother's Indian and my father's Tibetan. So Buddha... The... What? The fuck are we doing? <laughs> and then the names are like, yo, the coming new, new special. Imada ha sha 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 who? <laughs> but if you're Indian and Tibetan and you ain't never seen an Indian Tibetan comic, do you I'm, count? No, no. <laughs> I know that, but it's like you can tell that they're not ready. You know when someone's yeah. bombing in their special, yeah. they don't show the audience. They do all cuts to like, yeah, crazy. Crazy shit out there. <laughs> and then they'll then they'll insert like a black audience. I wish, 
<laughs> I wish more Amazing. comics. I wish more comics would realize that a fire three minutes will get you as much mileage as a solid hour used to. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Twenty years ago, fifteen years ago, you don't need an hour if the purpose yeah. of the the purpose of the hour was to get on TV yeah. to get exposure Closure. to sell tickets live. Yeah. No doubt. If the three minute joke, and you figure out another ninety second joke. And that gets motherfuckers to see you live. You have accomplished the goal. Yeah, you know what's and, crazy? Good. And you're not giving your hour away to a network or whatever. Yeah. Like, because for whatever you want to say about, oh, you got three hour specials, Wood and Rugged Comedy Central Gator specials. Viacom owns them. I can never make another dollar off of those jokes. I could tell them again. Like, I could do some Taylor Swift shit and re record my masters or some yeah. shit like that if I wanted. Right. But right. nobody wants to hear the same joke twice. Right, right. Comedians don't get to fucking tour on their catalog like fucking right, musicians. Yeah, yeah. So I just, rather than rush an hour that's not ready and be seen and see the flaws, give yourself some time to learn the craft, you know? Yeah, it, 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 yeah, go ahead. No, I like uh, I had an hour come out a few months ago and I submitted to The Tonight Show. And I was like, yeah, I wanted, could I do a set to promote, you know? Like, yeah, this isn't, you know, this isn't for us. I was like, 60 minutes, all the, nothing, I can't, I can't come up with anything that, it's like, no. So I go, oh, ah, shit, okay. Yeah. So then. And for context, took a, your took a hour minute. was a parody of the late night yeah, the format thing, in a way. The thing where you're making fun of them? It was a, it was frame. It, it, was a, it was a parody. It was, it was more like a frame. Or whatever. Yeah, but too, I, but the yeah. thing where you're in the suit. Yeah, yeah. And you come, maybe they were mad at that. Maybe, I don't know. But then, but then I take a minute and a half clip and the one's got like 16 million views. It's like, oh, well, that that did more than the... Yeah. Because I, I, it's an antiquated way of thinking of like, oh, I got to get on this and get... Yeah. It's like, no, all you need is that. Just, That's all you it. Need. There are more phones than people. Bro, and the... pray to God you, you get that right Plinko chip that yeah, day right. and it goes down to the 25 grand. You hit it and all of a sudden your tail wins and the video takes off. It's like, yeah. Oh, good. And the beautiful thing, you don't have to count on them. I don't even think... I saw JP, you know JP? JP JP Buck, Buck former yeah. Conan Booker. Yeah, he yeah. was at. Uh, I just did South by Southwest, mm -hmm. and he was there, and he Good. came to my he came to my shows, and he was like, "Damn!" I, I, but I don't ask him about it, doing code. I just say, "What's up?" I don't yeah. care. I don't yeah. because it's a different world now, man. Yeah. You can you hey. just count on yourself. Ali Sadiq did it. Ali Sadiq. You know, Domino I'm, Effect is one of the it, best comedy specials of twenty twenty two. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. Top two. And it's at five, six million. He's selling out theaters. And he goes, yo, Godfrey, I'm going to tell you something about my kids. Hey, I, 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 he's like, I'm glad I didn't have to do no HBO, man. Fuck that. He goes, he didn't even realize, like, he's selling out theaters now. Yeah. And that's the thing is that the mistake Putting that it up we YouTube. made, the biggest mistake young comics make is going after the goals of their OGs. Right. I was taught, because I opened for niggas who was trying to get on Letterman, Therefore, in my head, must get Letterman. Right. Yeah. And by the time I got Letterman, <sighs> Letterman wasn't Letterman. Right. And that ain't a diss. That's just the evolution of late night. Yeah. I got yeah. Letterman 06. That got me a couple extra clubs in the Midwest. There was no magical TV sure. show producer to Ray Romano <laughs> me off into the rafters. Hell no. It didn't happen for me like that. Yeah. So you got to figure out a way to fucking just reach people. That was the whole point of doing hours was to reach more people. Right. You now have a way to reach but that got, you into the, that right got you into the business of television. It was all about reaching people. Mm -hmm. Remember when you were growing up, ratings was like, oh, uh, uh, Starsky and Hutch made, you know, Love Boat was at <laughs> 9 million. to 60 million. People saw yeah. it. You didn't think, the, the, was it uh, Neeson? No, no, Nielsen. Nielsen rating because they had boxes. It's like, that's, we've captured that. We got, we got the secret. They're like, fuck, these motherfuckers got numbers now. Because Engagement comics don't, don't give a fuck. If I'm packing a room and I'm on a TV show, I don't give a fuck. Joe Rogan don't give a fuck. He just built a comedy club. Have you seen it? Yes, yeah, no, I've seen it. it. I was there. Pretty sick. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yo, I was there in, in, in Austin two days ago going, God damn. It's called The Mothership. It's beautiful, man. And I'm with it. They're selling out everything. And the it's, minute the tickets go on sale, now there's a black market. For it's the tickets, I, I fans. They stub hub and Joe Joe Rogan's comedy club. <laughs> yeah, to go see Tony Hinchcliffe. 
<laughs> but yeah, and it's but I was, enough, I was, you know what I mean? But it's I was like, with Hinch. Three I was times with, dollar face to go see. I like, was with Hinchcliffe that night. It was after the show, and I was. He has a room where everybody gets to chill. Yeah. And Hinch just goes. Doesn't it feel good if we don't have to answer to these motherfuckers? You know Tony Hunter that face. Yeah. Huh, Godfrey? It doesn't it feel fucking awesome? If you can suck our dicks. I don't give a fuck about them. We run our own shit. Isn't it fucking awesome. He was right though. Yeah. He goes, they don't we That's... don't have to answer you wake up answering to no one. No, but yeah. Even I still go on auditions, bro. I still gotta and sure. it's like I, I'm almost tired. But even the streamers, they don't tell you your ratings. They don't tell you how many, but it's like no. we don't need. Now you just put on YouTube. But look, you want to see the look at how many views I got. Yeah, it's like it's amazing. That's what I need. What are you gonna say? No, no, that's it. What we got? Oh, I just number two. Oh, oh two. I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> I can't read your handwriting. Kismet. It's James Adomian. Oh, oh shit, my God. Adomian. James. Oh, we just talking. Okay, here we go. I saw outside uh, an accident where a smart car got T-boned by a guy walking and texting. <laughs> the smart car was total, but luckily the iPhone had a pretty good case on it, so they didn't <laughs> keep it out of the court system. Um, it's nice to be here in Austin where Alex Jones is a real person. <laughs> Everywhere else in the world, he's just like he's a demon that somebody's uncle listens to. He's gonna do it. But he's real here. We believe it's the conspiracy is true. <laughs> I know what's happened. We have information that goes all the way to the top. <laughs> uh, I saw a couple years ago at South by Southwest, uh, Alex Jones with a bullhorn heckling <laughs> South by Southwest. <laughs> Like, the idea of fun itself is wrong. The Illuminati must have done this. <laughs> Great voices. I like when he has Jesse Ventura on his oh, radio show. Because it's a contest to see who has, like, the deeper, scarier voice. <laughs> Governor, you're joining us. What do you want to talk about, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> We've seen... We have information that there's documents. I know love documents. They're like catnip to me. <laughs> we shredded them up, Governor. I'm going to roll around and up. <laughs> what a great fit. Good he does a Bernie Sanders that is yeah. so fucking amazing, yeah, too, he's bro. Yeah, he's a bad dude. He was, on my, he was on my season of Last Comic Standing. Oh, okay. 20... 10 2011 mm. somewhere in there the year felipe esparza won oh and what's up fool that Great was dude. what's up fool <laughs> that was one of the best to me the best season of last comic standing mm. because there was no games there was no gimmicks there was no reality show fuck shit Just stand oh, you go up, up every week Thank you. and yeah. do your jokes and you know contest comedy i can't stand that shit if you're playing the <laughs> win hang on I, if you're playing the win it forces you out of what you are because okay, right, now right. you have to do quick joke. You need oh, quick joke. Man. Three, three, three. James was like, no, I do voices. I tell stories. I'm going to tell stories. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're not going to win, right. but he didn't come off his square and like try and change yeah, up into let right. me do some quick shit right. and quick. Right. Like, no, I need to set up the picture. Then I'll go into the voice. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just, don't you ever see Alex Jones? This is my impersonation. But Alex Jones and Jesse <laughs> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to set that shit all the way up. Yeah. I get what you're saying about contests. I do a late night uh, yeah. talk show set, though. Yeah. You got to compromise your bits oh. with language and then speed. and yeah. they, they make you. And the producer's telling you. Yeah, like how how it, how it's gonna work for? It's like no, I know how it works. I've been doing it it's for like, two I did, years. This I did I did late night with Jimmy Fallon before he took Tonight Show over. Jeff, uh, you know Jeff. Um, God dang it, Jeff from um, Singer. Singer, thank yeah. you, Jeff Singer. He calls me because I cool with Jeff until you know Jeff got yeah yeah the Montreal shit. Ugh. So he goes, Godfrey, I'm 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 booking for late night with Jimmy Fallon. He goes, have you ever done late night? He said, I don't really do late night. He goes, you're kidding me. I said, no, I don't really, I don't really tailor my shit for that because I don't really, I don't feel like. They start you know, tinkering with your mm -hmm. jokes and the yeah. commas. And, and, he moving, goes, and yeah. he goes, fuck that. He goes, before I get fired, I'm getting you, Jay Ogers. He's like, I'm oh, getting wow. all. <laughs> so Named he all said, the people that are getting fired. Said, and he said, he said, 
And he goes, listen. Big J ain't gonna follow no rules from yeah, legal. But Big J got on. We all got on. He goes, <laughs> he goes, listen, I know you got some bits that are good for TV. I'm gonna I'm gonna be in your ass, but I'm getting you on. I said, I'm it's five minutes. I'm gonna be a pain in the ass. I said, that's cool. And so I did the my father, the Nigerian shit. Yeah. And I got on there. I fucking destroyed that motherfucker. It was like, you know, the roots are right there. The roots are left. Yeah. Everybody, and I got off stage, standing there, standing ovation, whatever. I didn't think anything of it. And this, there's this dude that used to work on The Tonight Show, this old Italian guy. He goes, it's about time a real comedian gets up there. I wow. Jesus Christ. That was yeah. fantastic. I, I used to work on The Tonight Show. I've seen all of you like, nice job, you know, and then oh, I never great. came back. But <laughs> <laughs> I never came back. Too real. Yeah, yeah, but I never came back. And, you know, it's like, you know, you're in the NBC studios with SNL because I got rejected three times by SNL. So Crazy. for writing and performing? No, for, when I auditioned, the first time I auditioned was at the comic strip. Mm -hmm. When I auditioned for SNL, mm -hmm. I got standing ovation. I because they said you got to do four characters. You know, I'm coming from Chicago, going, and you're like auditioning for SNL. Also, you the producers are there for a live to watch yeah, you live, live, and it's like, wow, man, I might be able to be like Eddie Murphy. You know, you grow up on Eddie Murphy, you're like, I'm in New York, I'm about to audition for SNL. What? The? It was mind blowing. And so I did four characters, right? You had to do four characters and four like uh, impersonations. I was like, oh, okay, I got, I know what I'm gonna do. I even did five of them just to top it off. I did it. I ended with Johnny Carson. I blew that shit. I Black remember man doing Johnny Carson. Because I, I was like, wow, good stuff. Did not know that. <laughs> you're going to be a star. <laughs> I was like, Ed, this joke. I did that. Yo, they were like, your voice <sighs> going to go. And, and I was like, and you're, you're a, I've been in comedy. It's the only comic that does Sherrod Small impressions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, money. <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Nigga. Better. Roy Wood Jr. Roy Wood, we got to connect. <laughs> Roy Wood, we gotta connect. <laughs> David Tell. Reese's, Reese's, Reese's. You know, whenever you get on stage, you walk fast. You're a black man, Godfrey. Tell us the struggle of a black man. <laughs> go on, go on, Roy. <laughs> like, but like, after a while, don't you get detached from auditions and you just go, I did it. Either pick me or don't. Yeah, I'm so. Yeah. It's like. It's like Morgan Freeman in Shawshank Redemption. Oh, at the end. When he goes, stamp I don't give a damn yeah. what you do. Put your little stamp there. I don't give a fuck. And that's how we got out. Yeah. I used to care. I mean, we all did. Yeah. Roy, we cared. <laughs> Hi, how I do? You know, a, a great story. I remember Bill Murray saying he started booking a lot of stuff because he didn't give a shit because he saw Gilda Radner. Mm -hmm. And Bill Murray went into every audition like it was precious. Like, I'm hungry. Yeah. I need this. And they saw Gilda Radner, who was a very, you know, grew up in a very predominantly rich family, yeah, you know. Yeah. So she didn't she didn't give a shit. She's like, I'm I eating. Don't need, I don't care. Yeah. So he saw that and he's like, I'm just gonna go and not give a fuck anymore. Yeah. And he didn't give a shit. And then he just that I mean, and you you could see him. I mean, when he's doing you watch film, you're like, he doesn't nice give, give a fuck. <laughs> and De, De Niro just I was watching because I I follow like acting acting um accounts. Where you don't have actors giving you advice, and this actor, uh, De Niro, goes, "You got, see, you gotta go in like you don't care, like you're not gonna get it. You have to do that. You have to. Not, I'm not gonna get this shit. And when you go in there, you know that's it's better for you. Don't go in. Don't give a fuck. You can't. You can't mm -hmm. care. Yeah. Like, you know. But he was, and, and guys like that were fortunate that you had a guy like Scorsese that loved these guys. Sure, yeah. And he kept them, you know, working. Because he was so totally. about Italians, which mm -hmm. I love. I mean, I wish I was in the Spike Lee crew. Well, Spike Lee did that for Denzel and a lot of people. But yeah. I've never been the guy to be... I'm, And this is not me being negative. I just never got chosen to be in a crew of people. Yeah. I've never gotten chosen you know so it was always i was always a solo guy you kind of you were like that until you got your shit Chicago, but I was, chicago's interesting too though mm -hmm. and where i feel like it's communal but it's not a click i don't no. know of any chicago comedian clicks correct me if no. i'm wrong no we're it not. is the most stylistically diverse yeah comedic, it's the most fertile the most different That's types funny. of comedians come from chicago yeah no yeah. two are similar nope but they all could play each yep. other. South side niggas could play North side, no doubt. vice versa. Yeah. But there's no clicks in what like in the South, you just don't come up around nobody. Mm. Every week I'm out of town with a different yeah. person and it's either yeah. a polished headliner yeah. or a yeah. washed up alcoholic who's doing this just to fucking make alimony. <laughs> 
eight minutes on Piggly Wiggly. I can't be friends with you. We can't write a script. Yeah. You, I can tell on stage you gave up. Like, I can't. <laughs> You're doing local jokes. <laughs> There's nothing creative in you. So by the time I got to the coast, I didn't move to LA yeah. till I was 10 years in. Yeah. I met Burn. Burn fuck with me some. Yeah. But even that was like, I wasn't past at the clubs he was passing. Right. So when the fuck are we gonna see each other? So right. it's like that getting it out the mud and fucking growing it's together. Really, yeah. That's what Spike and Denzel and all that, them that, motherfuckers yeah, I had. Wish, I wish Adam I could. Sandler and all Sandler them. Sandler had his crew. Yeah. Uh, everybody had their crew. Seth Rogen had his crew. Like even Craig Robinson, who's from Chicago, we all came up. Craig Robinson, Dion Colmey, Dion D-Ray, Corey Holcomb. I brought Corey Holcomb to Amateur Night. I forced him. Bro, I saw a clip. <laughs> I can't tell you why I was watching the clip. Uh -huh. I'll tell you all fair. But I was watching... I'm digging in the crates, and I found an old episode of Bernie Mac's HBO late night oh, series, The Mac Man Hour. I just started comedy. Okay, youngest shit. Oh yeah. I just started comedy. Like the fact that Bernie Mac was just pulling. Are you from Chicago? I right, come be on the Bernie, show. I used oh, to, wow. We would do Bernie Mac's room on Mondays. He had open mic mm -hmm. with his band, and so it was me as Dion, Corey Holcomb, all of us did Bernie Mac's Mondays. Killers. Yeah, and and we would DL Hughley would come. Cedric would come from St. Louis. Cedric Entertainer. I mean, we I saw Mark Curry. That's a fucking Mike black Epps. comedy. Black. It was because I was. That's a class. Because yeah, I was the, I was on the north side. I lived yeah. on the north side of Chicago. I lived around Cubs, the Cubs Stadium, mm -hmm. and you know you have the White Sox on the south side, Cubs on the north. So I was a north side guy. And people act like there were no black people on the north side. I said, yeah, but I was more in a, I was in the most diverse area in Chicago. I grew up in an area which had the most immigrants because my parents come from Nigeria. We grew up in a place called Uptown. So all my classmates were from Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, F Philippines, so Korea. Chicago just kept all the African Americans, Jewish. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you ain't so black, so you get the yeah. thing. You ain't regular black. Which, um... <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so I grew up oh, in that, that shit. City. And then South Side was known, even though there were, it, it was very segregated because there was a white South Side. You know, there was, there, it divides by, nine, the, the, um, by the Dan Ryan. There was the black South Side and there was the white South Side because right by, by where Comiskey Park, where the Sox play, there's an Italian neighborhood called Bridgeport. And right across the bridge, there's, a, there's all black, the projects and Italian, they were racist as fuck. Yeah. I mean, you would get chased out by Italians wearing Michael Jordan T-shirts. It's very weird. <laughs> They'd be like, yo, get the fuck, you fucking moly motherfucker. Jordan's the best. <laughs> what? <laughs> Imagine you, you, Michael Jordan is, is in He'd your call town. call you a moly in a Jordan And they jersey. watch Oprah at nine. Because <laughs> Oprah is Chicago. Sure, yeah. yeah. Jordan. Still. People, there. Yeah, because we had Michael Jordan when I was coming up. You know, you coming up in con and and Michael Jordan and Bernie Mac were friends, were best friends. Mm -hmm. So Ber Michael would be at our shows. It'd be Michael, Ahmad Rashad, no. and then it'd be Bishop Don Juan. You know, the pimp that hangs around. Oh wow! Yeah, he's from Chicago. So listen, it's, it's the just, most random mix. Listen, of Bishop from the Pineapple to the Big Apple. <laughs> <laughs> man, baby, let me tell you, man, that's on the track, baby. I'm telling you, man, hey, Hollywood, I'm Hollywood, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this, this fucking spot on. And, and come in his green so, Cadillac that he never got rid of. When I did Soul Plane with Snoop Dogg, yeah. I'm nine days I'm spending with Snoop Dogg, just me and Snoop in the cockpit, having the best time of my fucking life. Me and Snoop are, ta are we're talking about Scooby Doo. Me and Snoopy, Snoopy's shit. like this, man. Remember Scooby Doo? It's like it's always the same dude, man. It's Mr. Bum. It's Mr. Anderson. Oh hell no! <laughs> I mean, because he's so smart. Because he, because we yeah. grew up in the same era. Yeah. So he goes, man, Scooby Doo. It be the same motherfucker all the time, dog. <laughs> Imagine being with Snoop talking about Scooby Doo. Yeah. And so Bishop Don Juan comes on the set, right? This is when Snoop. That's when he was, I was mentoring. He was mentoring Snoop. Yes, and this right? is when Snoop discovered I was from Chicago, and because Bishop came and greeted me first, he goes, "Hey, young blood, I'm proud of you, dog, man. Hey, I ain't seen the pimps are." They're greeting me. <laughs> they was like, we remember you, man, when you first started Birdie Mass Club Cotton Club. I said, yeah, what's up, Bish? He was Bishop Magic Don Juan. Yeah. Okay. Snoop goes, 
hey, how the fuck you know him? I said, I'm from Chicago. You from Chicago? Oh, Nick, that's why I fuck with you, dog. <laughs> Yo, he didn't know I was from Chicago. Yeah. And I was in the movie Original Gangsters with um, Bishop Don Juan. You know, Original Gangsters was a movie with Pam Greer, Richard Roundtree. Oh, wow. That was my first movie. Wow. In, yeah. in Chicago. It was that and Keanu Reeves' chain reaction with Morgan Freeman and Keanu Reeves. That was my first movies in Chicago. Damn. Yeah. yeah. See, you came up. At, see, I was in Alabama. We ain't in, in the South. Wasn't no production, but Atlanta was not Atlanta. No, in right. '98, motherfucker. Right. I, my first TV credit was a PBS Civil War reenactment. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. You, Wait, in the cockpit with shoot dog. Yeah. Shut up with the with, with, what happened? So. <laughs> so. So I get cast in a Civil War reenactment. Already laughing. <laughs> As a black Union soldier, right? <laughs> and I'm like 18 or some shit. And I'm like, yeah, you yeah. That you all with your fucked up hat? Now, because it's PBS, they ain't got no budget. And they go, oh, they, oh go no. they go, wear black shoes. I go, all right, bet. Only black shoes I had was Jordan's. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say black dress shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they said black sh What they meant was black. So I get on set, full slave gear, icy joint, crisp. And then they go, oh, we'll dirty them up. And I go, no. <laughs> These are my real Like, I'm 19, nigga. I'm fucking I know you got Jordans on. You ain't gonna... <laughs> I'm fucking. Oh. I'm fucking... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And these were the Jordans I got off the credit card. See, this is back when I was running credit cards. Back in the, and they, I have a whole nother life with you covered. Got probation, I ain't go to prison. But I have this pair of Jordans that I've just stolen from the mall, and this is my oh, crown jewel. Yeah, but to get this TV great. credit, I have oh. Jordans, and there's a shot where I'm like sitting by the fireplace, you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, I got my rifle, and like, and it's like a simple line, like, for freedom, we always fall. And for freedom, we, are, oh, like, just back of my day. one of those fucking, and they're trying to figure out how to shoot around my Jordan. It's not historically accurate. And around us are real reenactors. Yeah. And I didn't know how serious, like, <laughs> Civil War reenactors, even the black ones, they take it serious because they look at it as we are living history. We are presenting a piece of history for people to see. And there's like a live audience. We went to the, it's in Florida. It's the Battle of Olusty. It's right outside of Jacksonville. Oh, and they reenact it every year. And spectators come. So the niggas take it serious because people bring their kids. Right. And we want to show you what history was. <laughs> And the director had to go over to one of these real, legit fucking actors and go, hey, can we borrow your shoes <laughs> for this fucking... Time? And they would, they, all of them said no. No, really? Because it cast me. Hire me. Why did you even have him? I do this all the time. Why did you even think you needed... Why did you think you even need to go get an actor to pretend to be... An, and I'm just sitting by the <laughs> fucking... <laughs> In wool during the day next to a fireplace. <laughs> Fucking just a campfire. You know them Civil War outfits? That shit wasn't short sleeve, nigga. That shit was Some wool. Under armor. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Fucking Ooh. Ooh. I love I love our first gigs because they're always sometimes so horrible. Uh, Dude, I, they put a log in front of my feet to hide my feet. <laughs> Yo! All right, look, we gotta, great. we gotta, we, we, we. This one went off the rails, but one of my, one <laughs> well, of my I love favorites. it that it goes off one the of rails. Favorites. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Where can everybody keep up with you guys? Oh, is this? Wait, we don't have time yeah. for the third That's one. It? We get one more. Do one? Okay, well, do, uh, let's do the surprise. Clip. Are let's you the, serious? Let's do the surprise clip. Yeah. Okay. How long is this show? Hour. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't fuck around. You run a tight ship. You yeah, know, you niggas really lit, lit, you lit us. You lit your own fucking podcast. <laughs> All right, let's do the last clip here. Don't wrap it up. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Oh, good. Good. I Steve. believe this is the best friend you can have when you're growing up. Not only that, I believe this is the greatest human being in our country. I'll tell you who it is right now. Fat white girls. <laughs> Fat white girls. Girls, and I know this PC climate oh. we live in where everybody's a victim and somebody in this room right now is going, oh, he's being mean, he's being cruel. No, I'm not. I'm being celebratory. I'm going on the books, on record, and letting everybody in this room know right now, 
I love them fat, I love them white, and you best believe I love them girls. <laughs> and then they applaud. They're like, yeah, yeah, I love them yeah, yeah, girls. Awesome. He fat broke it down. white girls at the forefront of civil rights. Whatever fat white girls do, it takes the rest of the country a few years to catch up to them. <laughs> Which sounds ironic. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Burr. That's fucked up. Let's all be honest. Honest with each other. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, nobody's fucking black guys. 20 years ago, nobody's fucking black guys publicly. But 20 years ago, who's parading around downtown without a care in the world fucking a black guy? A uh, fat white girl. Facts. Facts. Flash okay. forward to today. Who's fucking black guys? Everybody's fucking black guys. <laughs> well, thank you, fat thank white you, girls. Thank you, fat white That's true. Very true. Because you can civil rights. Because I'm in that. civil rights. That was good. I like a fat. I like a white. I like a girl. <laughs> when there are overweight women, let me think of a word and keep my job. When there are women okay. that are larger than other women, voluptuous, <laughs> very, very juicy, <laughs> juicy girl. Nothing wrong How with How do the juicy white deal. women respond when you? Because I remember <laughs> I you like were flirting with deal. that bit a little bit during the Sullivan tour. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it didn't make it to the special you did after because you had a special before this one. Which one is this called again? This one's tell the damn joke. Okay, like when you look out in the audience, like and well, you see yeah. the one person that's like, there's fat white <laughs> girls all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. but they, it's always the thing. They laugh the hardest. Once you make the connection. Mm -hmm. Once you land the dismount, they're laughing the hardest. Right. The setup's always the toughest, right? Yeah, of course. But you got to soldier you... through the setup. Because that? you got to soldier through the setup. Like, yeah. that's what makes yeah, it do. Yeah, I like that. It was like, I like that was white. like, I like them girl. Like, yeah. That like, was good. That was so I like a black. Fat. It's like, hey. <laughs> I like them white. I like them girl. <laughs> it works. Yeah. It worked. Because that's a. Ooh, because they're so. You'll oh, see them. Yeah. Oh, it's funny when you do a joke about someone with an ailment and they're right there in front of you. You go, there's a guy with no arm. And I'm telling the joke. <laughs> you know who does that shit beautifully? I was, I've was i seen dudes, like, I've literally talked about a guy with one arm, and the guy was like this. Yo, what's up, man? That was funny as hell. I'm like, oh, shit. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> I think if those groups are cool with it, yeah. then the rest of the audience got to ease back. Yeah. The yep. motherfuckers that, that I've seen do it the best modern day, is the 85 South show. Oh, they're so great. Fucking Chico Bean, DC Young Fly. And yeah. um and um Carlos Miller. And Carlos Miller. And Clayton. There's and Clayton. Clayton English step yeah. in too. Burn, there is a clip of 85 South on YouTube where there is a man in a wheelchair up front. And I think on the other side of the arena, there's a girl in a wheelchair. And they're trying to get them to fucking <laughs> holler at each other. And it is the funniest goddamn shit. Like, but they, the way that they address the disabled community at right. every show, yeah. I see you, thank you for coming, joke, 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 and they laughing and they with it and it like fucking, it just it brings the room. It's and so... It's like, and they treat you like a human being. That's exactly, treating yeah. people like a human being. Because like, I'm going to roast you just like I'm going to roast this other ugly motherfucker over here. That's, I'm a, just... that's the thing I, I, I have an issue with like the trans community gets so much, it's like, no, we're, you're part of the club now. You're That's the way I thought of you. it. It's like, you're part of the club. If you're part of the club, everybody under this umbrella is getting made fun of. Everybody. So, so it's like, we're making jokes because you're now in. You're now in and they, yeah. and they and it's unfair because it's like, yeah, because I what I do, I have trans jokes, but I do it from asking questions from, because we know trans people, so I ask questions. But yeah. I go, yo, for you gay community that wasn't homophobic, Welcome to comedy, motherfuckers. You want to be treated like regular people. Mm. This is what comedy does. It brings everybody, everybody into, together. Yeah, you know, everybody gets fucked with. Yeah. And by the way, the lineup at the cellar—you're doing the jokes on a lineup with people that uh, you know are, maybe gave you tags right. and helped you. Yes, curate that's, or go go oh, yeah. step off the step out of the box on that one a little. You know, whatever. Yeah, Just, yeah, yeah. I'm always curious about that. Like when you start a joke from a place where somebody's gonna get offended, because like that's what I'm going through now. Oh. And like that's the hardest joke to workshop because it's like, mm -hmm. fuck, I gotta put it up in front of them because I also think it's bitch made if you do a joke about a community and you won't perform that joke in front of that community. Yeah, do it in front like of you them. Like you gotta oh, absolutely do it in front of them. Yeah, do it like, in front. Like you of remember them. that joke burned the um, the gay 
uh, fuck, I can't even remember my own shit. Uh, start calling gay people niggas. You oh, remember yeah. that joke? Yo, yeah. I had to do that. So the the, sh- the long and short of it was uh-huh. that you get in trouble faster for saying a gay slur than a black slur. Yeah. Gay people do it. a good job of eliminating words from uh-huh. from America. Election so if you want to get rid of black slurs, you got to just start calling gay people niggas, and then gay people add that to the list, and that word will get taken. Awesome. So that's the base. That's the joke, and it would be fine. But I had to do it in San Francisco. Yes. I yeah. can't. Like when we were touring, I'm yeah, like. Yeah. And burn in the back seat. You gonna do the joke tonight? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble, but let me fucking do it. And huge reception. Yeah, because the it's joke great. is just they from get a it. place of y'all get shit done. Yeah. Black folks that's, don't. Well, that's so the help just us. the subtext of the joke, but a lot of times they get caught up in the words. Wait till I'm done and get the meaning. Quit. Your IQ yeah. goes down because you let this offense uh, interrupt you. I go. Comedy, it, 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 you can't not be offensive sometimes. It's wait till what the it end is. to be mad. Yeah, wait till it ends, motherfucker. It is what it is. It's you know, it's like going to a boxing match. They're trying to kill each other. No, they're just boxers. Right. They're 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 gonna hurt each other, but they at the end they hug each other. It's oh, part of the game. Yeah. Just what the fuck, man. You know what I mean? I I know I know two gay dudes in um. They're an old couple. They come and see me every year. Oh, on the West Coast, Jerry. Those and, guys, they come to every huge and they, comedy and they match. go. And I remember they go, yeah, the new gay community, they're a bunch of F-words. They're a bunch of faggots. <laughs> <laughs> they're pussies. What the fuck? Laugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They say it, and it's the funniest shit, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, comedy is, they're trying to police it, but it's not. No. It's and, not going to work. And, again, this is where it, this where it, it Periods. Because you don't have to do it with the network. You just do TV. it on this. Yeah. People yeah. are just as excited. When they've seen a video of you and oh, yeah. you're in the street, they it's go, the th- yeah. it's the same excitement. Yo, you the dude off the... Are you fucking kidding? But you just got to be willing to put the time in. I mean, you're fortunate and it's always great. He's fortunate. You're on a consistent show. Oh, yeah. Like, when you're not, you got to be realistic, though. Mm-hmm. You got to go... But it doesn't always transfer for him. Maybe in some regions you don't sell out or maybe you do I don't I'm still know. in comedy clubs there's folks that ain't that's had a TV st- it's folks that ain't had a proper TV credit in a decade and are they're selling, selling out that's yeah. why it's, it's important science. to do everything you know oh, you what have mean? To, yeah. I still go on audition I still go dun, 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 dun. I still do it just yeah. in case what if I do get uh, sure. uh, a Chicago fire what if I do yeah. Yeah. I don't know but I do it but then I but this is the priority it's like let me let me put something up yeah, and man. somebody can see every single minute you know what I mean? Every day. Yeah. Every day. Well, yeah. guys, thank you again. I love you, Bert. I love you, buddy. I yeah, love, we love you, both you gentlemen. Yes. Uh, I, I love you guys. Same I, birthdays, guys. Time. July 21st. Same birthday. That's right. Yeah. Um, When's your birthday? December 11th. Sagittarius. Fuck y'all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where can everybody keep up with you guys? Yo, in your mama's house. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? I just always thought you answered your, yeah, your mama's house. No. Um, Instagram, comedian Godfrey. Yeah, Roy comedian. Wood Jr. Just put an at sign in front of that. Yeah, there you go. comedian there you go. Godfrey and my podcast is in Godfrey We Trust on the Gas Digital Network, Tuesdays and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern. And, and always go on live on Instagram. Always. When is this When is this showing? When is this? Uh, I don't know. Damn. Well, go on my Instagram. You'll see my list of um, dates on my Instagram. I pinned it. It's the first post on there. And Roy's starting to tour again. Roy's getting right. wrapping up to do another Yeah, hour. I gotta there get on back out there. You know, Trevor Noah quit that Daily Show. I gotta get my shit together. Come on now. You know, I'm on the Daily Come Show. On. That's for the time being. Come you on now. Know. Did you host? <laughs> you don't know. I'm supposed to guest host at some we, point we in waiting. April. God we'll, we'll, dang, we'll, that's a no-brainer. That's we'll such see, a no-brainer. Just we'll I'm see. saying it for you. Don't want you have to say shit. That's yeah. a no-brainer. All right, I got to thank our sponsor. Yeah. Do you know car repossession is on the rise? Do you know you also have every right to stop a repo guy from taking your car? Consumers have broad rights to stop a car repossession from happening. That is where the law firm at Sue the Collector can help you if your car is about to be repossessed or your car was repossessed. You verbally told them to stop, leave your car alone. You were physically hurt or injured by the repo agent or they took the wrong car altogether. You may have a case. The attorneys at Sue the Collector specialize in wrongful repossession can help you or your loved one. If you or your loved one were injured, lost valuables, or wrongfully had your car repossessed, call us now. One Eight seven seven bad repo one eight seven seven bad repo again that's one eight seven seven bad repo thank you Roy Wood Jr. Godfrey if you're in New York City always go to the cellar you'll see 
a master. Like a fucking running. unbelievable junior college. Don't student. go before twelve thirty in the morning though. <laughs> he ain't I, be I there. know. I go super late. I know it's so terrible. Catch the late show. <laughs> That's the late. I know.